We're carrying right on with our 300 facts and we're going to look at the incisors. You'll occasionally get a question about the function of teeth and so for the incisors their function is mainly biting. The maxillary central has the greatest facial lingual axial inclination. So if we look at this cross section of a denture here you'll see that this central incisor is kind of leaning forward. So if we look from facial to lingual it's going to have a pretty good axial inclination sticking out. The maxillary central has the greatest cervical curvature of any other tooth and the deepest curvature is going to be on the mesial, not the distal, but the mesial. So let's look at a review of the CEJ because there's a lot of different ways they can ask questions about the CEJ. And remember, we're going to use the maxillary central incisor as a model to help us remember all these little facts about the CEJ. So the CEJ dips deeper on anterior teeth than posterior teeth, and the maxillary central incisor is an anterior tooth, so that helps us remember that point. The CEJ dips deeper on maxillary teeth than mandibular teeth, and the central incisor is a maxillary tooth. The CEJ dips deeper on the mesial side of the tooth, compared to the distal, and you're just gonna think of those two central incisors lined up straight down the middle, right there on that mesial side is where it's gonna be dipping the deepest. And then just reiterating this point here that the maxillary central incisor has the greatest CEJ dip on the mesial. The maxillary central incisors are gonna be the only anterior tooth that's wider mesiodistally compared to facial lingually. So here we've got a picture of the maxillary central incisor from mesial to distal. It's quite wide, even wider than the facial lingual direction. And then the maxillary central incisor has the greatest mesial distal dimension of any anterior tooth. The maxillary central has a measurement that is nearly identical for the incisal cervical dimension compared to the mesial distal dimension. So this word nearly identical, so both dimensions are nearly identical. But on this test, you have to really, really be careful about the dimensions. Pay attention to which direction they're asking. As we'll see later on, we'll get another question asking about measurements being nearly identical, but it's a different tooth because it's asking in a different dimension. The contact between the maxillary central incisor and the lateral incisor makes the lingual embrasure larger than the facial, which is pretty standard for most of the teeth. And that's pretty much just testing on the idea that the lingual embrasure is usually bigger. The incisal embrasure on the maxillary centrals is going to be really small. It's smaller than between the central and the lateral. The maxillary laterals have the most ground morphology variation, and that's mostly testing on that peg lateral. Except for third molars, the maxillary lateral incisor exhibits the most deviation in crown morphology. So same kind of thing, different wording. And then if there's anything really messed up with a tooth, often it's gonna be the lateral incisor on the maxilla. So the maxillary lateral incisor most often is in abnormal relation and contact with the adjacent teeth. And then the maxillary lateral is the third most commonly congenitally missing tooth. So just to review, the first most common is gonna be the third molar. And if you wanna get very specific, it's gonna be the maxillary third molar, then the mandibular third molar. Then it's gonna be the mandibular second premolar, and then third, the maxillary lateral incisors. We're gonna be looking at the maxillary central here. So the non-molar tooth that most frequently has a mesial and distal pulp horn is the maxillary central incisor. And this one's a little bit tricky here because it's super easy to pick the lateral because the lateral is sometimes known for having two canals. But remember, the maxillary central incisor has four lobes and so it's gonna have more pulp horns. And then the non-molar tooth that is least likely to have a bifurcated root is the maxillary central incisor. This is another area where you have to be really, really careful. So you notice I had least likely. It would be a different answer if it said most likely. And it's easy to pick the lateral in these cases because you're so focused on the fact that those laterals can have more than one canal. And so you see bifurcated root and you automatically think of the lateral. So just be really, really precise and careful in how you read these questions. The anterior tooth that's most likely going to have lingual caries is the lateral incisor. And that's because of this distolingual groove. So if you look in this picture, you'll see this distolingual groove. And for the next point, 
the distolingual groove is an anatomical feature that sometimes can make it hard to root plane. It can complicate root planing. The disto incisal line angle of the maxillary laterals has the greatest convexity of all maxillary anterior teeth. We're going to look at the lingual side of the lateral tooth right here. So the maxillary lateral incisor generally has the most prominent marginal ridges right here of all anterior teeth. And it has the most distinct lingual fossa of any anterior tooth. And that's in part because of that distolingual groove that can form right there, which can complicate root planing. So the maxillary lateral incisor has the most prominent marginal ridge and lingual fossa. The maxillary lateral mesiodistal crown width is the smallest of all maxillary teeth. So going mesial to distal, it's very small. Now let's go back to the central incisor because we had a very similar question there. And we see here the maxillary central incisor has the greatest mesiodistal dimension of any anterior tooth. But I, I mean, if you think about a molar, it's much wider than this tooth. And so that's why it says anterior tooth. Whereas this other one says of all maxillary teeth. Because think about the mandibular central incisor, that's even smaller. So again, you have to be really careful about how you read these questions. The maxillary lateral has mesiodistal measurement that's nearly identical to the facial lingual, closest of all anterior teeth. So be careful here, pay attention, because this is that nearly identical thing I was talking about. It's easy to see it's easy to see, you know, a measurement and then nearly identical and be like, oh, that's the central incisor automatically. But you have to look at what dimension it is because that changes the answer. So again, the maxillary lateral has the mesiodistal measurement that's nearly identical to the facial lingual of all anterior teeth. And then the mesiodistal dimension of the maxillary lateral is going to be narrower and skinnier than the maxillary central incisor. Now here we're going to go over contact points and this is going to be a lifesaver. I've had people tell me that this memory aid has answered five or six questions for them on the test and it's just automatic gimme answers if you know this. So here we have I just jacked Michael Jackson's moped and this is going to tell you where the contact is. So the IJ, the I is the mesial, the J is the distal, the J is the mesial, the M is the distal, the J is the mesial, the M is the distal. So I is for incisal and J is for the junction of the incisal and the middle. The M is for the middle. The maxillary lateral, its contact is going to be the most cervically positioned. So it's going to be toward the gums the most of any incisor. And that makes sense when you use a mnemonic. You just come here. M is the furthest cervical and it's on the distal of the maxillary lateral. So that answers that question right there for you. Now, this one is kind of weird here, but let's just kind of go through it nice and slow. So here's a picture of the lateral right here, and here's the distal contact, and that's what we're looking at. So this maxillary lateral has a distal contact that's centered incisocervically and facial-lingually. So it's definitely centered incisocervically because it's in the middle, and then it's centered facial-lingually here when you go from the facial to the lingual, it's right about in the middle. If I drew a line straight across there, it would be about right in the middle. The maxillary lateral incisor is usually equal to or larger than the maxillary central in root length. And this one, you have to be kind of careful and pay attention because we talk so much about and study so much about how this central incisor crown is big and much bigger than this lateral it's easy to think that that's just what you're looking at and you'll pick, you see equal to or larger and you'll pick central incisor. But here we're talking about the root length. So in this case, the lateral is actually the one that is equal to and sometimes larger than the central in length, just like that. And now this one is kind of another way to ask a question about the CEJ. So the mandibular central is distinguished by the cervical curvature, which is greater on the mesial than the distal. So if you look right here on the mesial, we've got a CEJ that dips deeper than on the distal. And remember, we're using the maxillary central incisor as our model to remember about the CEJ. The mandibular centrals and laterals most frequently have concave areas on the mesial and distal root surfaces. 
So you can see this shadowing here. That kind of represents that this root is squished inward a little bit and concave. The mandibular central is going to be the smallest crown dimension of any tooth. It's going to be the most symmetrical tooth, so it's going to be hard to tell the left from the right. And then it has the sharpest set of incisal line angles on the mesial and the distal. And you'll see that when you put two of these teeth next to each other, the two centrals, because of those real sharp line angles, it's going to make for a very small embrasure. We're going to look at the mandibular central incisors, and we're just going to look at all the various ways they can ask you about contact points. The mandibular centrals have their proximal contacts at the same level, and that's because it's the most symmetrical tooth in the mouth. So their proximal contacts are going to be at the same level. The mandibular central incisors have proximal contacts at approximately the same levels on both the mesial and the distal. And the mandibular central incisors have contact points at the same incisocervical level. The mandibular central incisors and the maxillary third molars generally occlude with only one opposing tooth. So that means there's one in each arch. So we've got the mandibular central incisors right here. They only occlude with one tooth. And then the maxillary third molars only occlude with one tooth. So in the mandible, it's going to be that central incisor. On the maxilla, it's going to be the third molar. And this is another area where you have to be really careful because they'll probably put maxillary third molar and mandibular third molar. And so it'd be easy to just see third molar and you just pick that right away and move on to the next question, but you accidentally picked the mandibular third molar. So just remember there's one in each arch, one on top, one on bottom. This one you have to be so careful on because it's super easy to pick the first molar, the permanent first molar. But remember, that's not a succedaneous tooth because it's not exfoliating and replacing a primary tooth. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to go on autopilot when you see this and just pick the permanent first molar because it's that first adult tooth that comes up. But don't pick it. Make sure that you read it carefully and always pick the mandibular central incisor. The buccal and lingual embrasures may be the same size. And that's because, again, of how symmetrical the tooth is. Now we're looking at the lateral incisor, the mandibular lateral incisor. The crown of the mandibular lateral incisor tilts distally in relation to the long axis. So another weird phrasing, when you get to the test and you read these things, it, it can be so confusing if you haven't seen it in a picture, like in my video right here. So let's just look at this picture of the tooth right here. We're looking at the tooth from the incisal and you see the distal has a little twist to it. So if we're looking at the long axis of the tooth right here, it's going to tilt toward the distal. So there's a distal twist. Now, if we look at the tooth from the mesial, you can actually see part of the distal marginal ridge peeking out because of that distal twist. And then the mesial distal width of the mandibular lateral incisor is going to be wider than the mandibular central, which is actually the opposite of what we saw on the maxillary. So remember, the central incisor is wider than the lingual incisor. They're opposite. So again, be very, very careful about which question they're asking. Are they asking about the mandibular or are they asking about the maxilla? Well, that's the end of this video. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Let's go on to the next video.